and now let's see how all these general formulas work in practice. So let's consider a simple cubic root function j of z equals the cubic root of 1 over z minus 1 minus i. So our g function is a simple meromorphic function with a single pole positioned at point z sub b equals 1 plus i. It's a first order pole. Now the assignment is as follows. We need to separate the regular branches of this function and find its values at three distinct points, which I'll specify later. First, we need to make this function single-valued. And to do so, we need to draw a branch cut. And as general theory teaches us, the branch cut always starts either at pole or at the zero of the function under the root. Here, our g function has a single pole at point z equals 1 plus i, so here is going to be the beginning of our branch cut. But where does it end? Should it go to infinity? Or should it be finite? Well, later on, we'll encounter functions with finite branch cards. But here, well, let's see for ourselves. So we draw a complex plane. And let's draw some finite branch card. We start at point 1 plus i and end at point, save 5i. So now let's draw a contour which circumvents this branch cut and trace the change of the argument of our multivalued functions and let's see if it remains single-valued. To do so, we need to trace the change of the argument of our g function and as you see from its structure, the argument of g function is defined by the argument of the complex number in its denominator, z minus 1 minus i. So, we need to understand how this argument changes. And to understand this, we simply need to draw this complex number. This complex number has an origin at point 1 plus i and ends at some point at the contour. So, once we make a full rotation around the contour, this arrow also makes a full rotation. And the change of its argument is 2 pi i, since the rotation in the counterclockwise direction. So the delta argument of z minus 1 minus i number is 2 pi. But that means that the change of the argument of g function is negative 2 pi, because this complex number is in its denominator. And here we have a familiar situation when the complex number under the cubic root makes a full 2 pi rotation. This inevitably makes this function branch. And indeed, once we make a full rotation, f of z function will obviously be turned into f of z times e to minus 2 pi i by 3. So the rotation around this contour makes the function multivalued. And to, in order to forbid that kind of rotations, we need to stretch our branch cut to infinity. And the direction of the branch cut is defined by the origin of physics or application problems which you are solving. Here it's just an abstract problem, so it's up to us to choose. So I choose the vertical upward direction. So let's redraw it. So now our branch cut starts at point 1 plus i and goes right upward to plus i infinity. Now our function is single valued, but we still need to fixate a particular regular branch. As you remember, it is done by a particular choice of the value of this function at some point on the complex plane. So let's pick up some point. The suitable point is z0 equals, say, i. Then f of i is equal to the cubic root of negative 1. And we need to pick up some root. So let's choose the simplest one, negative 1. And this condition is the fixation of our regular branch. Now we have all the constituents and we can define the value of our regular branch in any point on the complex plane. So let's do this. And we'll practice with three distinct points. Say point z equals 1 and two twin points on the banks of our branch cut. Say z equals 3i plus 1 plus node and z equals 3i plus 1 minus node. 
So let's start with the first point, z equals 1. Uh, then our first step is to draw a contour which connects our reference point and this point in question. So here is our reference point, i, and here is our point in question, 1. And we connect them by some contour, gamma. Next, we need to determine the change of the argument of our drift function, which is equivalent due to its structure. So finding the change of the argument of this z minus 1 minus i number. And again, we draw an error representing this number and trace the change of its argument as we move from point i to point 1. And we see that this number, this arrow, rotates by pi by 2 in the counterclockwise direction. So delta argument of z minus 1 minus i is pi by 2. As a result, the change of the argument of g function is negative pi by 2. Now, we need to find the value of our g function at point i and, and point 1. Well, the value at point i was already computed by us, it's negative 1. While the value at point 1 is simply 1 divided by negative i, so it's i. And now we have all the constituents to find the regular branch. So, let's write down the general formula f of z is equal to the modulus of the ratio of g of z and g of z naught to the power of 1 third times e to i by 3 delta argument of g from z naught to z times f naught. So f naught for all our points is going to be negative 1. And finally, the cubic root of the modulus of the ratio, which is the modulus of i divided by negative 1 to the power of 1 third. As you remember, we need to pick up a positive value for this cubic root, which is simply 1. And we obtain negative 1 times e to minus i pi by 6. And this is the final answer for our regular branch. It's interesting to know what would happen if we naively plug in this point z equals 1 into the definition of our f of z function. So f of 1 then would be equal to the cubic root of i. And there is a great temptation to write the answer e to i pi by 6. But this is, as we see, a wrong answer. It belongs to a different regular branch of our function. And the difference between the wrong answer and the correct one is precisely the factor e to 2 pi i by 3. And now let's turn our attention to these two twin points. Let's pick up the point on the right bank of our branch card. 3i plus 1 plus 0. And again, we do the same procedure. So we connect the reference point i with this point by some smooth contour. And find the change of the argument of our g function. The error representing number z minus 1 minus i makes a 3 pi by 2 rotation in the counterclockwise direction. So the change of the argument of z minus 1 minus i is 3 pi by 2. And that means that the change of the argument of g function is negative 3 pi by 2. All right, now we need to find the value of our g function at point 3i plus 1 plus 0. So g of 3i plus 1 plus 0. Now the question is what to do with this 0? Well, the 0 is important when we try to determine the change of the argument or try to correctly position the point on each side of the branch cut. But here, once you're trying to figure out the modulus of our function, it's completely irrelevant and we can discard it. So we simply find out the value of our function at point 3i plus 1. And it's 1 over 2i. Now again, we have all the constituents for our regular branch. So f of 3i plus 1 plus 0 is equal to the modulus of 1 over 2i divided by negative 1 to the power of 1 third times e to the power of i by 3 times minus 3 pi by 2 and times negative 1. And what we have is uh, e to minus i pi by 2 is negative sign divided by the cubic root of 2, which is simply i by the cubic root of 2. Right, and now let's find out the answer for the 
twin point positioned on the left bank of our branch card. So f of 3i plus 1 minus 0. So the modulus is going to be the same, but the change of the argument of our g function is going to be different. And again, we connect the reference point i with the point 3i plus 1 minus 0 with some contour. And we see that the change of the argument of our number z minus 1 minus i is this time minus pi by 2 because it's pi by 2 in the clockwise direction, so it's minus pi by 2. So the change of the argument of g function is this time plus pi by 2. And again, we write down our general formula. So 1 half to the power of 1 third times e to i by 3 times pi by 2 and times negative 1. And we obtain minus i to the power of i pi by 6 divided by the cubic root of 2. So this is how the schematic works for power type functions. But there is also another very important class of multivalent functions, the function containing logarithm. And these type of functions will be discussed in our next slide.